five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hello, everybody. This is Alex Bennett, and this is The Ramble. We go from now until, uh, let's see here, midnight, Eastern Daylight Time, and we got a friend with us uh, today, so let's check in. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown is uh, a comedian. A uh, very funny comedian. If you've never seen him and you hear that he's playing anywhere where he's nearby you, go see him. Although he sticks pretty close to San Francisco, right, Larry? Yes, although I did uh, last week. I had a occasionally get a really good gig. I did uh, the Microsoft Theater, which is where they hold the Emmys, and that was seven thousand people. That was uh, kind of fun. Really? Who, what were you, who were you there with? Uh, obviously, you weren't a headliner, otherwise there wouldn't have been 7,000 people there. <laughs> what? He, I was opening for Felipe Esparza, who was on the move and uh, coming up. And All right. Right. He's a very big, right? Now, that audience must have been Latino, right? Yes. How did they take to Larry Bubbles Brown? Uh, I... <laughs> I came out and said, build the wall. No, I... Uh, <laughs> which would have been great. <laughs> no, they they liked me a lot, so it was it was fun. And uh, I was thinking 7,000 was the big, biggest crowd I'd had since uh, I did your show at the Frost uh, Amphitheater at Stanford in 87. Uh, wow. Yeah. Which you well remember. Yeah. And and did they like you? Did they laugh? Oh yeah, I mean it's seven thousand people said, "Oh, you must have killed." And I said, "Well, if, if you can't kill in front of seven thousand people, it's probably time to quit." But you know, they were great. Is it easier to kill in front of seven thousand people? I think so, because if you if you get ten percent of the crowd laughing, you should kill, right? So, right, right. Uh, I uh, what was that? I found uh, uh, people always said to me like we did things at the Frost Amphitheater, and that was nine thousand people. Okay, uh, so I got your Microsoft beat by about two thousand people. Okay, <laughs> and everybody said to me, "How do you feel about doing, um, uh, it, it's, uh, going out in front of nine thousand people?" And I said, "When you got that many people out there, it's it's not people; it's just this massive thing." I said it would be harder for me to do a set or get up on stage at the Holy City Zoo where there are just 10 people in the room and they're all in the front row looking at you. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and that is scarier than getting on a stage where there are 9,000 people out there because it, 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 it's just this this mass of humanity. And, and so you don't you really don't get scared by it, you know. They're not. There, there are too many of them to rush the stage or something like that. I don't know, but I always, uh, you, I bet you always have found it easier to play in front of well seven thousand people than it was to play to just uh, you know a handful of people at the Holy City sure. Zoo. Yeah. The only thing, yeah, when a big, big crowd like that, you do kind of have to, you, you do your joke and you actually wait a couple of beats because the laughs take a little longer to get there. But Yeah. So does that throw your timing off? People don't understand timing. Uh, to a comic, timing is everything. You know. Uh, oh, we just lost him. What do you know? You, I, I, don't you just love when Skype does that to us? Well, we'll call him back. Larry is unavailable. Hmm. What does that mean? Let me see here. Let me try him again. There we go. Somebody, I don't know something what. happened to our timing. Uh, something happened to our timing. I just left that all in there so everybody could hear me try to get back to you. I don't know. All of a sudden, you just <laughs> Skype just went, you know, because I use Skype to call you, right? So anyway, so we're, you could get a landline. Yeah. So we were talking about you know about 
the ability of, of, of playing in front of a large audience as, a small, as opposed to a small audience. And the small audience is scary. The large audience isn't. Uh, yeah, and uh, I'd read that in one of Steve Martin's book when he was that year when he became huge, that uh, he played some big place. I think it was in Vegas, and he wasn't used to that big a room, and he... <clears throat> And so he thought he wasn't getting the laughs because he wasn't waiting. So he did the what comics tend to do when they're not doing well. They tend to speed up. So yeah, he just raced through his entire act, and he was obligated to do 30 minutes, and he said he barely was able to do half an hour because he was going so quickly. Wow. Wow. And, and he did that because the crowd, the large crowd, made him just, ramble through his material faster i would think it would slow you well, down it wasn't the laughs weren't coming as quickly he wasn't taking that extra beat to wait for the laugh so he just stepped on the laugh and kept zooming through it yeah yeah because you know in your you pretty well know in your act now where the laughs are right yeah and what kind of laugh that's going to be from the audience Right. Now, what happens when you go somewhere and you expect that there's going to be a certain response to a certain joke, and then you don't get that response? Well, that's, then you realize you're probably going to suck. I mean, it's hard. <laughs> Sometimes you've got a couple of really strong jokes up front, and if they don't get much, you just think, oh, this is going to be a tractor pull. So you, you know, you're not going to have any fun. Are those jokes put in there up front to feel the audience out? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Do you ever in your act, uh, once you find out where the audience is because of that initial material, change your what material you're choosing as you go along and do your act? Yeah, although I've never been very good at editing in my head like a good comic would do that. Sometimes I'll just plot ahead and do what I've got and it'll just dig a deeper hole, But which is another reason no one's ever heard of me. <laughs> You know, um, maybe maybe you're better off, you know. I mean, uh, would you rather be a Dane Cook or a but Larry Bubbles Brown? Dane <laughs> Cook had a career for about a minute and a half, right? He made a lot of money. Made a lot of money, but is that the object necessarily? Would you rather make the money and then because your your flame burned out so fast, not work anymore, or would you prefer to keep... To, Applying your craft like you have been all your life. You know? I would just like to get, I think I was fairly mediocre. I would just like to have gotten good at it. Not Well, Bubbles, I'm here to tell you something, and I, I, I'm going to tell you this as someone who loves you dearly. I'm going to be brutally honest with you. You're not mediocre. <laughs> brutally honest. No. You're one of the funniest comics I know. And it is. I, know. I just feel I never, I never put it all together. I think what I, I was good like in short sets. I don't think I, I think because my low energy, I, I don't think people like to watch me for forty minutes. So. Well, I don't know that you're a forty minute act. You know, you're more a twenty minute act. And the, re the reason I say yeah. that is not a bad thing. Short folks. sets. I, I'm, I'm saying that the kind of comedy he does is the kind of comedy that works better as a short set than it would as a long set. If somebody told you, well, you're a big, you're a big star, Larry Bubbles Brown, go do an hour. Could you do an hour? Uh, not anymore. I did it a couple of day, a uh, couple times back in the 80s, but I, I, no, I couldn't do one now. Yeah, and it's not because of, of strength or whatever. It's just that you, you think of yourself as a shorter act. Yeah, you know. Um, now you. So I feel like it. So I actually. So I feel like a failure. Actually. So. Oh, you feel like a failure. Okay. Well, yeah. the only reason you're a failure is not because you're not funny, but because you're not aggressive in getting the work. You know, you've never. Yeah, had I never had the aggression. You never had too the laid back. And, yeah, you've never had the aggression in your in your in your. Um, um, you know, handling of yourself because, you know, part of you is talent and ability at being a comedian. And the other part of it is aggressiveness, getting out there, getting the jobs. You know, we always talk about Will Durst, who I talked to Will 
And if there's a blank spot on his calendar, he goes crazy. You know? Yeah, so then, <laughs> absolutely. So, so what does he do about that? He gets on the phone and starts calling people. Mm-hmm. And that's why he works a lot, is because of that. Uh, and, um, um, you know. Whereas I hope the phone will ring. You hope the phone will ring. Exactly. Exactly. I hope my landline will light up. Yeah. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, you know, and so, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, um, I don't know. It's kind of... Uh, well, there's all, there's all types of comics, but I think, like, I would say most of the very successful ones are very driven, very aggressive, and yeah. very high energy. Yeah, yeah. Of course, there are, there are exceptions, Stephen Wright and people like that, but... Right. So, I mean, but, but what I'm saying is there's part, the part of it that I'm talking about is the aggression in getting the work and, and, and pushing yourself and getting yourself known, you know. Um, you know, today, people, like somebody like uh, Dane Cook, you know how he became popular? He used MySpace. Yeah, he used the Internet. He was one of the first people. He was people the first who, one to get. He had a million followers. This was in 05. Yeah, and 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 that gave him enough push that people would hire him, and uh, the movie companies asked him to make movies, and so on. They all found out he didn't have the lasting ability, but nevertheless, uh, he did it using the internet. Now, th- that's something you don't know how to use. I don't know how to use it, and I know most of the comics, especially the younger ones, they are on that 24-7 Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. And right. Just pushing themselves like crazy. I don't know how to do it, okay? And I'm your technical guy, okay? I, it completely mystifies me how you get a following on Facebook or how you get a following on, on Twitter, you know. Yeah, and that's... Uh, Apparently, even the TV shows, they have to put their clips and push them on the Internet to uh, stay alive now. Right, right. I mean, at one point, the only way I got Twitter followers was I bought them. You can actually... You no, there are these uh, these uh, 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 places you can go, and for, oh, say, 50 bucks, they'll give you 10,000 Twitter followers. Ten thousand. Yeah, and I went and did it. So I I built it up so I had twenty five thousand Twitter followers, and I did that. So in case anybody said how popular are you, I'd say, well, go look how many Twitter followers I have. You know, and then one day uh, Twitter decided they were going to weed out all those phony accounts, and so I went from twenty five thousand down to nine thousand. Appar- yeah. Apparently, they didn't catch five thousand of them. Yeah. <laughs> so you know that it was uh, that, but the the fact is that these people know how to use the internet to make themselves popular, and you don't know how to, and you probably don't want no, to, you know. No, I I don't, and I I know there's there are people that'll put something up on YouTube that gets a zillion hits, and uh, a big comedy club will book them for a weekend, and they've got you know, a five minute bit. So. Right. Right. But, but they'll fill the place. Right. Right. So, I mean, and, and, and what will happen is if you, if you call somebody and say, I want to do, uh, I want to do, uh, uh, your club. They'll probably go on Twitter to see how many followers you've got. Right. And I, I've heard, the uh, uh, casting agents are, Casting people in movies, well, actually, that's becoming a part of the uh, process now. How many followers does this guy have? Well, they're giving people national TV shows based on their uh, on their Twitter following or on their Facebook following. There's some woman who's on took over the late late night show at NBC, you know, the one that nobody watches uh, except mm-hmm. for maybe drug addicts. Uh, and <laughs> um, it's on at two o'clock in the morning. It's on. At, no, it goes on at one thirty. Okay. I don't, I've never heard of her before. And it turns out she was a YouTube sensation. And she's not bad, but, you know, I mean, they hired her on the, on the, on the strength Just on that. of the fact that yeah. she had all these YouTube followers. Uh, 
you know, based on the amount of YouTube followers that I have, uh, probably I could get hired by, uh, I could be maybe a janitor for somebody. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know. You're I not, like the old days better when we had gatekeepers. and. Well, you, but you're not, network. you know, you are not um, uh, mediocre. I mean, that's, that's the one notion you should never have. Uh, I mean, you, you, I'm telling you, you had two great sets on Letterman. Uh, and based on well, those, those are short sets, you know, that's, that's what I like to no, do. No, but more than that, I noticed something about you that was, I think, the most important factor. You work well on television. And the reason you work well on television is they do a close-up of you. And all your facial expressions, which are many, you know, which would get lost on the stage at the Microsoft Theater to 7,000 people. Yeah, they, uh... You know, suddenly makes you funnier. Well, that's a good point, because I always did try to make facial expressions, but it never shows up in a club. So. You know, they, 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 you could sit there with a blank stare on your face, and in the back, room, back of the room, uh, they think you're, they don't know what you're doing, you know. So, but you on television, I, I watched you do those sets. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I just, as, as it was going on, I went, God, he's coming across great. Because you had those facial expressions. You, the close-up of the camera made you really come alive. If there's any such thing as making Larry Bubbles Brown come alive. <laughs> the close Close as I came to being alive. Yeah, and I said you you should really do more TV because that's where you could make your mark, you know. And they wanted you back. It was just it took you twenty years to go back. Literally twenty. Yeah, In fact, 21. didn't you originally do your first set at NBC and wound up doing your second set at CBS? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. And when you finally came back, they they were happy to have you back. You know, yeah. And I'm sure when you recruited. left, when, I'm sure when you left, they said get some more material and come back and give us a call, right? Right. And you never called. No, I, I did have a chance to do it one more time, and I just thought, ah, screw it. Yeah, and, and you just said, oh, screw it, so much and so long that he finally quit the business. You know. <laughs> And if you think you're ever getting on Fallon, you think you're ever getting on Fallon, you're out of your fucking mind, you know. He got tired of waiting for me. Well, they, <laughs> there was no place in late night to do that anymore. You know, I don't know that no. any any comics get discovered on you know comics got discovered all the time on on the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, okay. The Tonight Show was huge, yeah. Not yeah. so much Letterman, but the Tonight yeah. Show was big. Well, but Letterman, Letterman, uh, well, Letterman put the comedian on at the end. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Carson would dump them somewhere in the middle. Somewhere in the middle, yeah. Letterman, you went on at literally it would be uh, one twenty-five in the morning. Yeah. So uh, uh, Letterman was not as good a place, but Carson. Would I think he put the comedians on in the middle? He would have his big right name, in the middle, yeah. and then he would have the you know the new comic, and then he would maybe bring out somebody with snakes or you know koala bears, yeah. So I mean, uh, but um, um, and that launched people like Stephen Wright and Roseanne Barr and Drew uh, Carey. No, one one shot on there propelled their yeah. career. A uh, Roseanne went on, did one shot. Next thing you know, ABC's signing her up to do a sitcom. All right. You know, uh, uh, the same thing is true with uh, George Lopez and a whole bunch of people like that. Jerry Seinfeld did his first shot on Gary Shandling. On Gary Shandling. I think uh, I think Letterman actually got started pretty well with his first shot on Cars. That's correct. That's correct. So you know, uh, that was a that was a great place for comics. You know, but th that doesn't yeah. exist anymore. So where what, what where what does exist? Well, I guess we put Larry Bubbles Brown on YouTube. You know, if I were in California right now, I would YouTube you. I would have you come to my place, and we would sit there, and you would do a, a you would do a podcast. 
you yeah, know. somebody wants me to do that, so maybe I should follow up on that. Yeah, yeah. Because that that would get you, uh, you know, some kind of some kind of an audience, you know, and it would give you a presence. That would give me th- at least three hundred five. But then again, you're too old for anybody to want to hire you. Okay, that's the bad that's, news. That's also true. You know, that's the bad news. The good news is you're not mediocre. <laughs> you know, I know That's that. That's going to be my new mantra. I'm not mediocre. <laughs> I know that if nobody's hiring you, that doesn't have anything to do with the. Uh, or rather, uh, if nobody, if they're not hiring you in great numbers, that has nothing to do with whether you're mediocre or not. It has to do with the way you're pushing yourself. Okay, and I hate to say this, your age. Yeah. Because I find that. Uh, nobody takes old people seriously, you know. Uh, no, it's the it's the one uh, prejudice that you can freely have. Oh, discuss. I, I've given up trying to get back into radio again, you know, because I know that if I went somewhere, they would look at me, they'd see that I'm, you know, hitting 80, and they would just dismiss me. You know, uh, uh, you know what a pro! Wow, remember him? What a pro! Yeah, we'll keep you on file. What well, a pro! Well, you know, I still, I still have it. Well, um, call us back when you, when you, when you want to have it again. I don't know. You know, I mean, it's just, it's disgusting. But that's the, it be- is. you know, that's that's the best you can do. You know, so you have to understand that your age holds you back. Like, if you're a comedy writer, you can't write in Hollywood after, what, 45? Maybe not even that. I'd heard, like, uh, I heard in the 80s they didn't really want people over 35. In the 80s you heard that? Yeah, and they said people that had written for MASH and shows like that would actually take that off their resume because that age then, oh, they've been around a while, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, come on, you know. I've said this before, I will say it again, when it comes to age... Funny's funny, you know. And you say, well, there are exceptions. You know, there's Lewis Black. When's the last time you saw Lewis Black on television? You yeah, know? you brought that up a while back, and I just started thinking, I haven't seen him in years. And it's not that he's not well. I'm sure he's just fine. I'm sure that his age finally caught up with him. You know, I mean, I yeah. talked to I talked to Bobby Slayton, who says he has trouble getting... Uh, booked in clubs because of his age you know uh and and um so i mean it it just it it, there and to me funny is funny you know you can write you can write comedy if you're 80 for crying out loud you know you would think uh i heard there was a big uh convention a while back of uh comedy club owners and they had all these consultants come in and the consultant said the average age of a comedy club goer is about 25. And they said if they walk in and see somebody on stage that's 50, they feel like they've made a mistake. Really? Yeah. In spite of the fact that, that person's actually going to make them laugh. Yeah, forget about that. It's just, oh, he looks older than me. <sighs> and you know something? You can't turn around and... and, and Put that on the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You can't put that, uh, uh, put that on the doorstep uh, of, uh, of, of reality because funny is funny. And I, I really think that even young people would love to laugh at somebody who's older and say, wow, he's still got it, you know? Um, uh, it, all, all I know is you're still as funny as you've ever been. And uh, I, uh, you know, I, I'm a big fan of yours. You know. So. Well, thank you. Give me the will to live one more day. With <laughs> well, that, yeah, that's not much, you know. And at the rate my <laughs> friends are going, you may only have one day left, you know. <laughs> you know. So I mean, um, if I live long enough, I'm going to see. I'm going to see everybody go. You know, and and so I live with two fears in my life that I'm getting to that age where I could die. And that's one of my biggest fears. And you have the same fear, right? Oh, yeah. I have a morbid fear of death. And and 
My other fear is I'm going to live so long that I'm not going to have anybody. You know, that I'm not going to know anybody. I don't get to know that many people anyway, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to get to know anybody and uh, know anybody any longer. And and that 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 makes me feel bad. So, you know, uh uh there's a problem with getting to be my age. Hey, listen, we ran out of time. We've depressed everybody. I think we've... We, 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 Bubbles and I... <laughs> but we I, did it in an entertaining way. <laughs> well, we, 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 we have managed to do our job by depressing the entire audience. Because you know? we're old pros. And, and you wonder why you haven't made it. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. See you next week, Larry. See you, Alex. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. Welcome. I, uh, this is Alex Bennett, and uh, I'm here. Let me turn up my microphone a little bit here and get everything all, all ready to go. Uh, I have to see we have the on-the-air light on over back here. There we go. Uh, so you know that it's got to be we got to be on the air for sure because after all you know uh, our light is lit up okay now let me let me um, uh, let me get our Skype going I can never do the Skype I've told you this before I can't get the Skype going early because I've had people actually try and call the show and then when that's open it it causes all kinds of little little problems so anyway uh, let me see here. That's where that would come in, and that's where that would come in, and we're we're cool. And now we open up. I noticed that um, I think Josh Wheeler tried to sign in earlier or something. But anyway, we're ready to go. If any of you uh, want to call this damn program, which is known as this damn program, okay, fine. Anyway, where are we? Uh, so uh, uh, our, uh, if you want to know how to call us, just go over to gabnet.net. On the right-hand side of the page, there's a whole tutorial on how to do it and how you can do it through Skype, how you can get Skype, how you can call Skype. There's like a one-push button to make you call Skype. And here comes Josh Wheeler, ladies and gentlemen. Let me see here. If we get jo- First, we've got to get Josh's picture. And here comes Kathleen. Let's see here. She was in here last night, so hers should pop right up. Uh, let me see here. Josh, turn the camera on. There we go. Let me see here. So i got to go into the number two spot and uh, bring in, uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, a live, uh, uh, live job a kazoo. Wow, uh, I have to always figure out. No, that's not what I want. That's not what I want at all. I want uh, char. Uh, oh, damn it! I hate this. Uh, let me see here. I need to g- uh, get uh, Josh Wheeler. Josh Wheeler. Where? Are there is Josh forty two. Okay, there we go. There's Josh. Okay, and uh, let me just. Uh, do that so that you can see the people we've got so far here. Uh, no Phil tonight. Uh, this is a Phil-free night. Uh, really? Uh, yeah, I know a lot of people find that uh, uh, really okay by them. Uh, so anyway, hi Kathleen. Hi Josh. Josh, have you met, you've met Kathleen before, haven't you? On yeah, she's been on. Yeah. Uh, in the past, multiple yeah. times. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So at the same time, I don't think she calls you every night, but yeah. Right, right. So anyway, uh, uh, what, 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 what's new? Anything new with either of you? Mm, I don't think anything's new. Yeah, you know? yeah. No. Been catching your shows, well, just waiting for an opportunity to call well, in. Well, it's nice that you have, and now we're waiting for other people to call too. So. Uh, uh, the rest of you can call in now. The coast is clear. Phil isn't going to be here tonight. Okay, that it's means Friday that, night. That means that Black. Scott can call and uh, Tom Yamaguchi can call without fear of of Phil. They have a big fear, Phil. Phil, full foot. Phil, uh, forget it. Why do arguments ensue? Oh no! You know what it is. Scott really gets upset by. <laughs> Uh, no, really. And, and <laughs> he gets very upset by Phil. And so he'd just rather not have to deal with him. 
and uh, other and Tom Yamaguchi, I think, feels the same way. So on nights where we have fill free nights, it's simple for them to call. By the way, is just in case, whole, is it the whole Trump thing? Uh, it is a Trump thing. Yeah, yeah. Wow. He's uh, he's he he's just he's too uh, he's too Trumpy. <laughs> you know. Uh, there's Darth Pat. Here we go. Add uh, Darth Pat. That would be Patrick. He'll go right down there. See him down there? There we go. Mm -hmm. And Ray Renati is calling, so I have to go over and get the other uh, template up here and bring Ray in. And hey. uh, let's see here. Ray is at the gym, but we have to first, we got to bring him into our. Let's see. What are you? You're Goomba, aren't you? Yeah, you're Goomba. Uh, yeah. 61. So we go here. Jeff's having, uh, Jeff's have, oh, there's Jeff. Okay. There we go. Jeff was having some trouble getting on. Uh, let me see here. Jeff, uh, go to put him in the sixth spot. Wow. We got him. We go. We got six spots already filled up here with, uh, with, with yeah, we got a, a real good citizen panel going here. And there's, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I put a Jeff in two spots. I don't want Jeff in two spots. Let me get rid of him in one spot here. Da, 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 da. There we go. There we go. Okay. Hello, everybody. How are you this evening? Good. Good. Yeah. There's, uh, They're perfect. there's yeah. Jeff. Jeff, did you have your friend uh, dinner with your friend last night with the prostate problem? Uh, um, it was uh, the other night, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did, 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 and yeah. It was great to see him. Did you ask him about how he handled his prostate cancer? Um, he's doing great. Yeah. The guy's 85. Yeah. And uh, he looks in perfect shape. He looks in perfect shape. Okay. Yeah. And what kind of medicine did they give him? Just some uh, hormones? <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Okay. And did he say they affected him at all, or he? He was so happy that the results were oh, great. Good. Terrific. Well, you know, um, good. Glad to what hear that. What kind of hormones do they give them? Uh, female hormones. Oh well, actually, uh, well, actually, actually, it's a hormone that does away with the testosterone that robs you of testosterone because testosterone. Cancer, prostate cancer feeds off testosterone. So right. if you deprive it of testosterone, the cancer won't progress and it may even regress as a result. So, yeah, it loves to feed off our male testosterone, the stuff that makes us virile and all of yes. that, you know. <laughs> Such uh, evil. By the way, I, uh, tonight we watch, we binge watch the entire second season of the Kaminsky Method on Netflix. And have any of you seen the Kaminsky Method? No. This is with Alan Arkin and uh, Michael Douglas. And it's done by, Ch by Chuck Lorre, who did things like Two and a Half Men and Big Bang Theory and so on. It is terrific. Uh, but yeah. if you're older, it is especially terrific. Did you see it, Jeff? No. Oh, no. you got to watch this. Oh, I mean, really? it's all the shit about getting old. Oh, boy. You know, but it's as, done as a comedy. You know, it, I, it, I, it's an amazing show. It's just an amazing show. I sat there and I looked at Girlfriend. I go, eight episodes. We ate all of them in like four, less than four hours. Okay. And, and I said, I could go for another five seasons of this shit. And I don't say that about very many shows because, you know, when they get into their second or third season, this is the second season. It was better than the first, you know. So if you have Netflix, Kaminsky Method. Yes, uh, Ray? I've been watching uh, Fleabag. Yeah. And I, I, I've watched like four episodes. I'm not really liking it much. Really? I loved it. Just right loved it. Right from the it. beginning? Yeah. Does it get better? It, it gets better and better, yes. But it's, uh, okay. it's good. It's very okay. good. And it, it, I'll it, keep watching. And, and, and it only has like, there are only what, like six episodes a, a season? Yeah, I'm almost so, done. <laughs> so you really don't have to chew off much. They're only a half hour each. Yeah. And when you yeah. get to that last episode, there's a reveal that just changes the whole nature of the thing. Okay, that's what I need. Because sure. something's not right. I guess I'm sensing that. Yeah, but it, I, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's a terrific show. 
Terrific mm -hmm. show. I felt the same way when I watched the first flea bag. I didn't go back for any more, and then my friend Shecky said, watch it, okay? So I forced myself to watch a second episode with Girlfriend. No, not with Girlfriend, without Girlfriend. And then I watched a third and a fourth, and by the time I got to the sixth, I went, this is terrific, you know? Yeah, the first episode, the pilot, was really bad, but yeah, it could get better after that. Well, it wasn't bad. It just sets the whole thing up, and you don't know where it's going. Yeah. To begin with, nobody on that show actually, except for one character, has a name. A silly girl. You know, and oh, that's uh, right. And she's oh. her name is Fleabag in the in the script, and you know, then there's you know, guy with bad teeth, and you know. Uh, you know just wow. no names for the characters. And she, hmm? and she is a flea bag. Everyone's a flea bag. Everyone yeah. is so awful. <clears throat> well, everyone's awful. Yeah, well, it's a great, it's a yeah. very good show. Watch the rest of it. I think you'll you'll start to really appreciate okay. it, right. and you'll appreciate her as a as a talent. She, this is a very talented yeah. woman. I'm trying to remember her name now because. Oh yes, yeah, she is. She is. But she uh, she did flea bag, and then she went on to do uh, Killing Eve. Uh, and producing that show. She isn't on it, but she produced it and wrote it uh, the first season. And then she uh, she's now one of the writers of the new James Bond film. I mean, she's she's all over the place. She's doing very well. So, anyway. Hello, Patrick. How you doing tonight? Think about it. Fabulous. Fabulous? Sure. Uh, you're always fabulous. That's what I like about you. You know, if I had your... Shall we say health problems? Uh, I would I would be a, a just an asshole. <laughs> you know. Well, I, I I got good news. I went to the eye doctor, and I got I'm gonna get my cataract out of my eye. Oh, so. the, are you getting? Oh, the cataract out of there. That's the simplest thing in the world. What? It's, it's, well, it's right. oh, it's shit. It's ready to roll, and I did good. Mm -hmm. so, so. Yeah. And uh, we have uh, Kathleen over there playing with her pussy. <laughs> Every time I sit at my computer, my cat wants to sit on my lap. Yeah. But then she starts making biscuits. Oh, you mean? Out. Oh, yeah, yeah. I used to call it making bread. Yeah. But, Same thing. Yeah. yeah. Biscuits, bread. Yeah. You ever yeah. shave that creature? Huh? Uh, you ever shave that creature? Shave the that cat? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? You should be ashamed of yourself, Ray. I hope you get a cardiac pedaling away. How's that? Yeah, that's yeah. terrible. Um, yeah, he, 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 he always calls us from working out. And then the people around him hate him doing it. Yes. You know. Yeah, I get really bad. I love it. Water. Yeah. I had. Huh? Uh, <laughs> what? I guess I get the YMCA people coming over and tell me to shut up. <laughs> Boy, you know when you piss off the YMCA, you've really pissed off somebody. I yeah. don't. <laughs> you know. And of course, if you're wondering what uh, Kathleen is doing, she's got her son off to the side who always refuses to come on the program. But he never is. He's always making remarks to her. Wait a minute. You're gonna, I'm gonna turn the camera. Try and catch him. Wait a minute. Well, you didn't even, you aimed it at the floor, you dumb Well, blonde. no, you know what? He hid. Oh, was that it? Oh, I see. Oh, is he, where is he hiding? Under the comforter. Under the comforter? Yeah. Wow. Cretan. Wow. Yeah, yeah, pretend you're asleep, you little bastard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come in! <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Hmm. Hmm. So um, let me see here. Uh, 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 Josh, anything in the news that you uh, want to talk about? Gee, there's nothing going on in the news, is there? No, no. Everything's swell. Everything's <laughs> terrific. <laughs> what I'm wondering, is there anybody who's worked at the White House who doesn't want to rat on Donald Trump? Uh, probably I, not. I mean, he must Maybe, be... Uh, Maybe Kellyanne Conway. She seems willing to suck his dick pretty just much just about any time he wants it. So yeah, maybe oh, not her. She's a whore. Well, no, she's been with him from the very beginning. Yeah. You know? uh, 
all these other people were hired on. But it just seems like everybody who works for him hates him. Yeah, pretty much. He he has his what two maybe three people. He's got her, and he's got that uh, that nut job, that Stephen Miller that works for him. Yeah, uh, the immigration guy. Yeah, I think he's he's probably still got one other person that. Uh, I mean, he'll he'll cast them aside eventually. You know, I mean, it just hasn't been done yet. But he'll when he's done with them and used them up, he'll throw them out just like he did everybody else. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Ray. Don't forget his family works for him. Yeah, they well, hate him. yeah. We don't know that they don't hate him. Oh, that's true. <laughs> no. They never say anything hateful. You ever. know, but the reason they don't hate him publicly is they're in the will. You know, so uh, right. you know they have a they have a loyalty that is, you know, not. Play. I mean, at at this point, anyone that goes to work for him mm -hmm. and suffers that fate, you know, it's like I, I laugh because the shame should be on them. Because if you haven't realized by now that if you go work for him, mm -hmm. whether it's three months or six months or a year, he will. He will you know, turn on you. He'll he'll destroy your career and yeah. tarnish your reputation for the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah. So you know. Uh, let's so see. I mean, that's why you know he's still got uh, you know Mick Mulvaney as the acting chief of staff because most yeah. people say they think that if Mulvaney wasn't there, they they don't think that uh, they could find anyone to take the job. We just I been mean, we just know? been joined by Kevin, by the way. Yeah, it, it, it's just that so many people are speaking out against him who work there that you just get the idea that they hate him that much, you know? I mean, many times if somebody does something wrong but you like them and they've treated you right and they've treated you well, uh, you don't rat on them, you know? But, man, they're, they're lining up. There have been about eight of them so far, nine of them so far that have gone before the committee and just substantiated all the things about uh, about uh, the uh, uh, the call to uh, the Ukraine yeah so and I I can't I for the life of me I really cannot understand the number of people that work for him that have done things that I know has to have gone against the grain of you know their conscience and their beliefs. And yet they've done it anyway. And I mean, apparently the only reason that I can think of is that they were that desperate to have a seat at the table or be in the room, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, they must really be that desperate to have one of those jobs that they could not wait to get it in another way that, you know, Mike Pompeo, for example, you know, just wanted to be the secretary, had just had this high level big job so bad that he was willing to basically sell himself out, you know, and things. Well, how about, how about, I mean, all these people are on record in the past. How about what, Bill Barr? Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's, Bill that's Barr is another, another example person. of that. I mean, yeah. uh, uh, in fact, I don't know why the Congress isn't working on impeaching him because he's just, he's doing all he's the there. dirty work for Trump. He's act, he's using the, the Justice Department as Trump's lawyer. And that's not what it's supposed to be, you know. And uh, yeah, the, he's, I mean, he's he's terrible. I mean, these people are, are I mean, they're an affront to everything, you know, uh, all traditional American values. And I mean, apparently I was naive enough of a person that I did not realize that some people are so desperate to hold power that, you know, they basically could just wake up one morning and do the opposite of what they've always believed in just so they could be in the room. I mean, I I, I don't I just didn't think there would be that many people, you know, but uh, apparently there are. And they all end up quitting eventually. But they is, wait it, so long. I, I don't know. I just can't. Is this a good it, job you know? to have on your CV right now? Right. I you mean, know, I mean, and that's what I'm saying. It's not like any of them are going to get anything out of it in later administrations. You know, yeah. I mean, like they're basically they're on the no touch list after this. If you ask me, it's like, you know, a lot of times we see people, you know, Obama had a lot of people who worked for him. Right. That worked for Bill Clinton. 
you know, when they were younger, et cetera. But I, I don't think any of these people are going to end up working in more mainstream mm -hmm. Republican administrations in the future. I just don't see it. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, no one's going to want them back. Well, also, well, it's, it, like, it's it, like he's working. It's like he's he's running it like a corporation and he's running it just like uh, your typical corporate brown nosers. They all line up and say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. And, you know, who knows what's going to happen but, after he's out of office. They'll probably all line up for, uh, you know, back checks when they're well, look, done. Look at how many people's reputations have been ruined by lining themselves up with Trump. Uh, for instance, Barr was considered fairly, he had a good reputation before yeah. this. Because, I, because you're right. You know, there's a lot of those guys that look at him and go, you guys don't really believe this shit, do and, you? Well, Pompe I, Pompeo, you know, Pompeo had a good reputation. And in fact, Giuliani, at one time, he was America's mayor. Right. You know. And by yeah, the way, I, I, by the way, what's happened to Giuliani? Have you heard from him in the last week? It's like... Well, he was in the news a lot today because of this accidentally dialing his phone while he was having a private conversation with somebody and he called one of the reporters that was on his call list and they it went to their voicemail and they have a recording of him talking yes. about certain <laughs> things idiot. you know and apparently he's done this before i mean i've said on the program before that you know they've talked on the morning show on msnbc all the time about how for the last good number of years it's been a you know the worst kept secret in washington that you know by the time six o'clock in the evening rolls around he can barely function because he's he 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 drinks so much. Who Gi you know? Giuliani. I mean, yeah, Giuliani's Giuliani. What well, you're so, saying, Giuliani's a drunk. Giuliani? Yeah. Oh yeah. They, I mean, Joe Scarborough and uh, what's her name there? They've talked about that on numerous occasions. I mean, I don't think they ever wanted to really say it, but he's gotten so bad, and and they basically have just, you know, with a wink and a nod, said this is why he acts crazy because he's. A little crazy, and he has a problem. <laughs> yeah, uh, Ray. Yeah, there's an interview. I think it was like three or four weeks ago, where he was so drunk that the uh, interviewer had to say something, yeah. and, and he was denying it, of course. But he was slurring all his words. <laughs> it was kind of funny. Yeah, I mean, when when he goes to prison, I mean they're going to have to dry him out. So those first couple days are going to be pretty rough. So, wow. You know, I didn't realize that about him, but you know, I'll believe anything because his uh, his behavior has been very erratic. Yeah, he's yeah. I mean, he's he does bizarre things that, you know. I mean, if I don't know, I can't think of a worse person in the world to have as your defense attorney. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you my phone. I'll show you my phone. Right. You know. Wow, that whole yeah, phone. That's what I'm you know, I mean the, the 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 crazy shit that he does with his eyes, and you know, he just he's just I don't know, man. He's he's fucking bizarre. He's bizarre. Well, you know, I mean that this whole thing is it's getting it's getting downright scary. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, I mean it. I I, has I don't know what the delay is really. That this the shit's got to speed up here pretty soon. Yeah. I mean they they seem to be still doing a lot of interviewing and deposition taking well, and all that. I mean, I tend to agree with most of the most analysts that say, you know, really, they could just stop right now and proceed. I mean, that they have enough to go with, you well, know, but well, they keep gathering evidence. Well, so I don't for a really while, know for a while I didn't perceive that, that Trump was in trouble because Trump always weasels out of this stuff. Yeah. And I also don't say it much here when Phil's around because, quite frankly, it makes him talk more. Uh, but... Uh, uh, the fact of the matter is that in recent weeks, so much stuff has come forward, like these eight or nine people who've testified before the committee that who were on the Ukraine call or who were in, intimately uh, involved with the Ukraine call, who all said, including, I think, our former ambassador there or our current mm -hmm. Was it a current ambassador or foreign ambassador? Uh, former ambassador. The, the current one. Uh, the current one, who said it was a quid pro quo. Uh, yeah, know, he was pretty alarmed. Uh, by and that. there's so much of this that it's all it's it's almost undefensible on the part of Trump. I mean, there's just too many witnesses to the crime. Yeah, you know. How do you feel, Patrick? Patrick always has a, a somewhat different take on all of this stuff. I I think I said this in recent weeks. I'm just sitting back and and watching. I mean, um. 
you know, I, I've, I've got no skin in the game. Mm-hmm. To speak. You know, I, I didn't vote for the guy. Uh, he, whatever. I mean, mm-hmm. if, if anything, I think Josh said it a few weeks ago, I'm interested in seeing the proceedings just from a historical standpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just like with Clinton. I found it interesting seeing the proceedings going on, not necessarily, you mm-hmm. know, what he did or didn't do, but, you know, I, I'm i a student of history and, and I enjoy that sort of thing. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I mean, I, I've been saying the same thing you guys have with the exits and the uh, people tattling or whatever you want to call it, but um, I, I'm not convinced anything's going to come of it. So that that's my take. I mean, I think this this might be uh, retrograde ejaculation for the Democrats, and. You know, that would be that would be that would be coming without coming, where it goes in rather than comes out. Back where I mean, they're gonna they're gonna get it built up, and they're they're hard and they're ready. And well, I think, uh, yeah, yeah. Ray had his hand up. Ray, uh, I was just thinking. Um, I think the Democrats are going on and on with these. This is questioning because they know that if they don't have overwhelming evidence, the Senate is not going to vote to impeach. And uh, so they just feel like they got to get as much as they possibly can because right now it wouldn't happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I the think the same thing happened with Nixon. I mean, the Senate, the Senate said that they would not impeach, and until there was just absolutely overwhelming evidence, and then Nixon resigned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but I think that uh, with with Trump, uh, no, I don't think he's going to get uh, convicted by the Senate. I think that 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 you know these senators are. The, That's what this, I meant. Convicted. These are just That's really staunch convicted. Republicans who are acting in a very stupid fashion. That's not in the best interest of the country. But um, I think he will get impeached in the uh, in the Congress. I think that's going to happen, mm-hmm. and and yeah, yeah, and I think, and, and and I think that's fine because. Uh, uh, no president who's ever been impeached in this country has been then gone on to be convicted. Okay, didn't happen to Johnson. Uh, it didn't happen to um, was it Johnson? Yeah, uh, yeah. back after Lincoln. Andrew Jackson. Uh, no, Andrew not Jackson. Andrew Jackson. Johnson. Oh, he was, yeah. Yeah. was it jo- Jackson wasn't impeached. No, J- no Johnson was impeached. I know, but wasn't Jackson impeached? No, also? no, no. Oh, only, oh okay. there are only two others before this situation that have been impeached, and that's been uh, 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 Jackson uh, back in the 1800s, and then Clinton uh, for getting a blowjob and then lying about it. You know, which uh, I want to see that one in the history books when they explain it to students of history. Uh, yes, kids, and now we're going into looking at the Clinton administration. Uh, you have to get your parents' permission to be in class, you know. It was a cigar. It was a cigar, you know. I mean, when you compare that to what this is all about, this is far more serious than what happened with Clinton. Yeah. You, you know, Clinton was just painted into a corner, so he had to lie because he was he was blindsided by the question about Monica Lewinsky. That wasn't even the nature of the... Of the uh, of, of the deposition that he was doing, it was in the Paula Jones case, and he thought it was going to all be about Paula Jones. All of a sudden, they bring up uh, Monica Lewinsky, and he's thinking to himself, oh, "Snap!" Well, he's thinking to himself, "You know, any guy, okay? It, well, who who was it? Lenny Bruce once said that if uh, you cheat on your wife and she catches you in bed with the woman you're fucking, deny it." <laughs> you know, just no matter what happens, deny it. Don't ever say you You're did crazy. it. Right? You're not seeing this right. Yeah, and that's exactly <laughs> the position that Clinton was in. You know, and he that's was in the position. He Trump was in. Goes by. He was in the position to deny it, and he had to deny it. That's um, history. Here, here comes Bree. Let me see here. Where do we put Bree? We put him in the number seven oh. slot. Uh, Donald Trump was a Lenny Bruce fan then. 
Huh? <laughs> Donald uh, Trump was a Lenny Bruce. Fan. I guess he was. Yes, because that's all he does. There we go. There we go. There's Bree. He's out in. Uh, uh, oh, and Tony's calling. Ooh, look at this, folks. We're getting there. It's Friday night on Alex Bennett. Yeah, it is a Friday night on Alex Bennett, where everybody is calling. Let's see, in the number eight spot, we we put Tony. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. He's. Uh, I have to look through all these names now and find him. Darth Pat Webhead. Webhead. There he is. Okay. There we go. Uh, there's Webhead. And uh, now we have nine. We're one short of a full house. Okay. What the hell is that? Huh? There's a coat walking around. <laughs> what? There's a coat That's walking a around at Kathleen's place. A coat walking around? Yeah. I didn't see it. It's my son. <laughs> What's he doing? Ru He's got the comforter covering himself. <laughs> he's hiding. Because I turned the camera towards him, and so he's like, don't put me Wait on camera. Let me see if like, we can flush him out. Oh, we have a Scooby-Doo mystery. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. We have a, I swear. I swear. You're funny. You're funny. That. Yeah, yeah, but uh, and then of course we've got Tony. He's the second funniest person here. Uh, all we have to say is, so how's your mom, Tony? And then you're we're off to the races. How was the cake? I can't wait. I'm gonna visit Checky soon, so I gotta fill him in. You know what? She made me. I you know what he said? Oh, look we got. We got N. Timmons donuts. We she was driving me crazy. We wind up getting N. Timmons donuts. Now people people who live in other places probably don't know from N. Timmons donuts. You don't have intimates out in California, do you? Have do you? No. Oh, yes. No, oh, you do? Yeah. I do. Oh, okay. I don't yes. Know. Oh, He's man. sleeping, Alex, thank God. What? Tony. Yeah. You need, you need, Tony needs to start a uh, recipe page, like Tony, Chef Tony's I, page. Yeah, I've been learning how to cook. She's teaching yeah, me. Yeah, you, 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 awesome. your food looks good, dude. It, she's liking it, so she's not complaining. So, But she walks me through it. Like She'll tell me how to do things. Yeah, so well, it looks pretty it up, good, man. you know. Some of the stuff you're putting up there looks good there. Yeah, I mean, I've been, you know what I'm doing, too? We like the barbecue. My brother and me bought gas. We like the barbecue. Wait a minute. You look, look at his Facebook page, <laughs> Kevin? Yeah. Oh, I don't. I don't blame you. <laughs> 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 no, but do you know what she's teaching me how to cook, though, really? She'll walk me through. She I'm waiting to see something he puts up there for his mom, you know, and stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, so, so it, it, there's all that. All that stuff he's cooking the for meatballs her. Meatballs. What's, what's your what's your what's your specialty, Tony? You know, to think about that. You know what I'm thinking. Chicken, I, chicken I, looks I good the other I, night. Hmm? I think I mastered the meatballs. What I'm gonna do is, if I make, because I I know how to do it now. I know how to like, because she doesn't really have like, you know, when there's someone an old person will tell you, you, you put a pinch of this and a pinch of that. So yeah. I kind of figured out how she did her meatballs now. Yeah. And. It's not that hard. It's just that you got to realize you got to put like you got to put the parsley and she kind of. So I wrote, you know what I've been doing? I'm writing all the stuff down. So just in case anything happens, I don't mean it to be funny, but yeah, you want to know because because I'll tell you the truth, Alex, I made a rum cake for my grandmother's. My mother had an old recipe for a chocolate rum cake. So me and my sister actually had to do it twice because it fell. It didn't rise the first time. And Alex, the cake was really good. But my sister had a good memory because she baked it years ago. So now what we're doing is we're trying to write certain things down so we don't forget. Nice. But I think the meatballs, nope. I've mastered mm. the meatballs. I have a I great recipe that. for meatballs, Tony. Do you uh, put uh, raisins uh, in it? You know, raisins and meatballs? Are you I out of your fucking mind? Put raisins in it, my but I bet that is maple. delicious. What? Yeah, my grandmother did that out. Wait, wait, so, uh, Kathleen, you got to be nuts. If you ever uh, had made me uh, that. With meatballs yeah. with raisins, I'd say, are you out of your fucking mind? No, you know until what? you tasted it, and then you would have yeah. liked it. No, I hate raisins in meatballs. Yeah. <laughs> yourself. Yeah. What? But it's sweet. Nah. It, I do it the same thing, but it does get a little bit of a different taste to it. Flavor. No, but, but here's my you recipe. You want, you want my recipe for meatballs? You want my recipe for meatballs? I get in a cab, and I, I go to Costco... And I buy their meatballs, and I bring them home, and I cook them. I did that once. Their meatballs, the meatballs at Costco. Anybody had the meatballs from Costco? 
I actually bought them. Yeah, they're good. They're, she got mad at me when I bought them. Yeah, they're great. She said I was the money. Huh? They're great, aren't they? She don't know the difference, but she knows the They're difference. huge. They're uh, huge. Yeah, they are. Okay. I could go out to the kitchen now and bring them in and show them to you. In fact, I'm hungry for one of them now. So, but it, yeah, it, I'm enjoying it, though. I, we discovered the meatballs a couple of weeks ago, and every week I, I pick up the meatballs, not oh, necessarily for a dinner one night a week, although we do that with them, but I just make them so they're always there. And for lunch, I'll have a meatball. They go, they last for I was a week. Say that. They're these huge meatballs, yeah. and there are like about 12 huge. of them in the they're in the huge. tube. I, yeah. I love having them. You know, know what I'm talking about, Kathleen? Or are you just playing with me? I'm playing with you. Oh, I see. You're playing okay. with your balls. You're playing with my balls. <laughs> I love the I love the salt ones. Yeah. So yeah. Sandwich out of them. Yeah, I can have that like yeah. for the next night. I know I got. There. Are you still there, Ray? Is Ray still there? I think we lost Ray. Lost Ray. Well, we'll leave his space open in case he calls back. He fell off the bike. If no, he. You know what I'll do? I'm, I'm gonna visit here. Shetty I'm soon. Here. I'll, I'll bring you over meatballs. I'll have him give them to you. Oh. I don't want raisin meatballs. I don't want them I anywhere put near the me. In yours. I'll, leave, I'll leave them for him. Leave the raisins out and just. I will. Yeah, the meatballs I'll will be fine. And and so by the time I get out to see Shecky next, it'll be about three years. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll pick them up. Yeah, he'll eat them. They're good. Yeah. Although in three years, I'll probably be dead. So. Yeah. There's Ray. Oh, there's Ray. Okay. Yeah, he's back. Sorry. It's, I got in my car and it car play did something. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not even hooked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See? Good. Well, now you're gonna drive home. You're in. You're where? Well, I'm gonna go to the liquor store and buy some non-alcoholic beer. Why non-alcoholic beer? Why would you drink? Because I can't. I can't drink. Why can't you drink? Because I'm getting off this freaking clonopin. So uh, why? You know? That'd be a good reason to drink. No, it makes you. Yeah, but it makes you feel like. Shh, uh, no way, man. The, uh, the 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 side effects are horrible. Are they weaning? Are they weaning you off the clonopin? Yeah, it's been a year and a half. I've been getting off of it. Yeah. That that long? Yep. What do they do? They keep taking you down and down and down. Yeah, like five percent a month. I've had terrible withdrawals. Yeah. yeah. Um. But since I stopped drinking and I and I've gone vegan pretty much, mm -hmm. I feel like it's a miracle. I feel so much better. You feel so much better now that you're vegan. You know why I wouldn't feel better if I was vegan? Because I couldn't eat oh, I, fucking meat. That's yeah, why. Well, I love meat, about? but I, I was desperate, and and it. I don't know. I I, I just what do you feel mean? way what, better. What were you, de what were you desperate? Vegan. What were you desperate for? Oh. Well, I, Look up benzodiazepine withdrawal syndrome, and then you'll know. <laughs> Just look it up. Just look it up, and uh, you'll know what I went was going through. Oh, okay. All right. Well, yeah. all right. Whatever you right. say. Uh, anyway, so um, um, where were we? Uh, gee, we got a whole bunch of people here. In fact, Maurice Tunick, my old friend from Sirius XM, is uh, uh, watching us on... On uh, on uh, on the on the Facebook uh, feed, you know we're going out over YouTube tonight, and we're going out over uh, 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 Facebook. And Facebook has hardly anybody watching, and a lot of people are watching on YouTube tonight. Yes, uh, uh, Patrick has his hand up. Uh, meatballs and raisins and all of that. Yeah. Wait, 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 hold on a second. Turn on, mute your, your phone, uh, Ray, because you're. Yeah, sorry. It's making, it's cutting, uh, uh, cutting down on the feed from Tony. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Tony, uh, Patrick, go ahead. So what are the odds of uh, Hillary being in the race now? I hope not. Uh. I mean, she keep yelling, she won't shut up, and Joe Stein is a fucking uh, Russian asset. And Tulsi Gabbard, and she won't shut oh. up about those. So, I mean, is she is she going to come in there and basically put a wrench in what the Democrat might? Be? Oh. I'm only a mother. Wait, what? What? Wait a minute. You know, she can really fuck things up doing that. You know. She's serious about running. Well, I don't know if anybody 
anybody would be in her corner at this point. I don't think that anybody can think she can win because she lost. She, she, they ran a fucked up campaign. They didn't run a, a good ground game. And that's how they won, how the Electoral College went Trump's way. I mean, Trump lost by three million votes. But still, if you can get three million more votes than the guy who, who won and still lose, then you're a real loser. Kathleen, hold, mute your phone if you're not going to be there. Because, can you hear us? Yes, uh, hold on. Uh, okay, because we can hear you yelling at your son and everything. Yeah. Oh, no, don't. Now she, she uh, turned herself off. Well, she turned herself on soon. So. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. So. But, uh, she, I mean, the way that I'm looking at her, mm -hmm. at the, the same way as um, what's his face fucked it up for uh, H.W. Bush, uh, Ross Perot. Yeah. Yeah. Where Hillary could come in there, and I'm sure there's still <clears throat> Hillary uh, diehard. Mm hmm. Are just the same as the, the Bernie diehard that won't give it up. And uh, I mean, I, I think it's an interesting prospect. Well, it's, I mean, it's been talked about. I mean, they talked about it last week on a couple, couple of shows. There was a pretty long article in the Washington Post about it maybe five or six days ago because she's been asked a, a little bit about it. And she she won't say, you know, no. I mean, she's not saying yes, but she's not saying no. But the article in the Washington Post basically indicated that, you know, four or five or six days ago, very quietly, no one really paid any attention to it. Mm -hmm. the, the second investigation that was opened up into her email things, you know, the one that James Comey famously, you know, blabbed about, that, that investigation is over. And, you know, Trump's own Department of Justice and State Department now say okay, we're done. Yeah, there was nothing there. You know, there was no wrongdoing and no intentional wrongdoing that we see, you know, nothing basically happened. It, it's over. They've closed it. I mean, no one is looking into that anymore that I'm aware of. That issue is over. And, you know, the article basically that I read in the Washington Post said, you know, she feels two things. She feels vindicated now in that respect. And she feels like, you know, she's ready for an I told you so moment. Where, yeah. you know, she did. She she did tell us that, you know, Trump was fucking crazy. I mean, so it just said, you know, with all that, she hasn't been able to close her mind and not running again. You know, I mean, there was a lot of obstacles She's there. Coming. Don't get me wrong. Yes. But. She's coming back in. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, Kevin, are you there? Yeah. I'm oh, here. Okay. You were kind of like very still. So I was afraid we maybe lost you. Uh, Kathleen, are you back again? No, she's not back again. So why, why'd you feel she was back? Uh, here, I'll call her again, see if we can get her back online here. Um, she, she actually, instead of muting, she hung up. <laughs> this is what happened. Uh, so let's see if she gets that. Where, where are you? Uh, wait a minute, where, where are you now? You're in a liquor store, right, uh, uh, Ray? Yeah, I'm in a liquor store. Yeah. Yeah. Here's yeah. the uh, non-alcoholic beer section. Yeah. They're probably looking at him like it's crazy. Can I have a non-alcoholic beer? Non-alcoholic. Non yeah. Wow. Some of it's horrible. The one I like is not here. No, oh, well. Okay. Yeah. So he's, he's not exciting. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, 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 yeah. Yeah. This is exciting, isn't it, folks? Look at that. Yeah, this is yeah. Cool. Oh, you, you got some Heineken. Heineken Zero. But what, 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 what? It has no alcohol in it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Zero percent. So they could, they could sell that. Yeah. They could sell that anywhere, right? I yeah, I guess they could. Uh, mute, mute yourself uh, there. Mute yourself, yeah, yeah. Ray. Okay. okay, because we're getting a lot of you know, pick up on aisle nine going on there. Uh, let me see here. Uh, wait, wait. Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, Jeff. Yeah. So we were talking about 
who might be the Democratic uh, candidate, mm -hmm. so to speak. Mm -hmm. And the one that I heard about, again, was the mayor of New York. And I don't mean Ron, uh, the, the, I'm talking okay. about the guy who's the active mayor. You're talking about Bloomberg. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. pretty interesting, isn't it? Well, I think it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, what do you think? What do you think about Bloomberg? Well, I haven't really heard from him. That's what I. Heard. <laughs> what? What? What do you? Well, I think he's a fucking fairy. That's what I fucking think about him. Wait, wait, wait a minute! Oh, fucking sissy pants, motherfucker! There's <laughs> no way I vote for that fucking guy. Why? Well, he's a Jew for crying out loud! What are you, anti-Semitic? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, I don't. There's another fucking rich guy that ran bit. Just can we just stay away? I mean, just get a fucking professional politician. Well, I mean, Bloomberg I mean, was someone a... who can get fucking things done. Yeah, but Bloomberg who was can a prof... operate in Washington. Yeah, but Bloomberg is a professional oh. politician. He's a professional wine ass, is what Bloomberg. Is. <laughs> you know. Are you sure you don't like him? I'm positive. Yeah. It, the only it, thing that would make it any better is if Chuck Schumer was his fucking running mate. You know, that was the only thing I can think of that would make that ticket any more attractive. Well, I don't have any great love for Chuck Schumer myself, there personally. You, you know, um, he's kind of like a pain in the ass. Yeah. Right. But I mean... I don't think Hillary's going to actually try to enter the race, but I don't know. You never well, know. Let's ask Kevin. Let, let's ask Kevin out in California. Would you vote for uh, for uh, Bloomberg? No, nor is Chuck Schumer. Okay, <laughs> but suppose it were between Bloomberg and Trump. I like Bloomberg. No, you like Bloomberg. Uh, um, uh, uh, we can't even see him actually. Um, but, Is it right? but, but no. huh? Uh, you, you like you, li you like Bloomberg? Okay, we see the top of your head is what we're seeing there out of three. Um, you like? Why do you like uh, Bloomberg? He is a pragmatist, centrist, moderate pragmatist. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, 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 by that, you mean what? That he... Hey, is, sh show you know, us, he show us... responses uh, to things. Can he you won't do things simply yeah. based on party lines. Can you show us more of your face? It's kind of weird just seeing you. It's like, oh, there oh, like, we why? go. Yeah. It's just one, a, more. one more. There we so go. It's boring. It's supposed to be clean. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how I feel about Bloomberg. Um, I don't know if he could win. That's the problem. That's, again... We... Imagine that debate with Trump and him. I mean, what can Trump really knock him on? He did a good job in New York. Yeah. He's got more money than him. Yeah. He could just end the debate and say, you know what, Donald, you're worth one billion, and I'm worth a lot more than that. Yeah, here comes <laughs> Kathleen. All joking aside, She's back. I know like some guys, you may not like him, but if it's Trump for his bloom, how can you really vote for Trump? Yeah. Uh, Kathleen, what you did was you didn't mute yourself. You hung up on us. I reckon I did. Yeah, you reckon you did. I reckon. Yeah. When did you become a Texan or whatever with your reckoning? Well, Tracy, you were in the Hicks. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, we got somebody from Tracy. We got somebody from uh, where, are you, where are you located, Kevin? You're down in the South Bay, right? Down in Hollister. Hollister. And uh, Phil, if he were here, is out in Contra Costa. I guess everybody else is not uh, not out in California. I'm in Palo Alto. You uh, oh yeah, who who's in? Pa oh yeah, you're in Palo Alto, right, Ray? So Palo Alto. Palo Alto, yeah, Palo Alto. Anyway, that's that's what my uh, that's what Google Maps says. Palo Alto, Palo Alto. No way you said Palo Alto. Palo Alto. Really? Yep. Used to call it it. East Palo Alto. Yeah. Now let me ask Kathleen because she's the woman in the crowd here, and and who who are there any of these Democrats that appeal to you, Kathleen? None. People. No, what's that one dude? The 
Buddha. Buddha Judge. Buddha He looks like Elf on the Shelf. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I see him, I want to take him and put him somewhere else and tell my son, hey, look, he moved. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. Put some little green boots on him. Totally. Shrink him down. Isn't he cute? He is a little toy. You can think about it. Well, he is. He is I think he is short and he is, uh, he is gay. But he also, you know, he's kind of a candidate that it would be very interesting to see what Trump could say about him. Because he couldn't make fun of the fact he's gay. He's Alfred E. Newman. Because that would be just too much. <laughs> Alfred E. Okay. Newman. He can't uh, give him a bad time for his military record. He did three tours of duty in, uh, in, yeah, in, right. in Afghanistan, I think, and Iraq. He's got more courage than me. How about, uh, how about a he went to Buddha Harvard Judge Yang ticket? What? <laughs> What'd you say? What'd you say, Kevin? How about a Buddha Buddha Judge Yang ticket? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take a look at this. <laughs> That'd be something for him to work with. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I think Buddha Judge would be a good vice presidential candidate. You know, yeah, probably. He'd be happy. I thought we all decided uh, Tulsi Gabbard. What Tulsi Gabbard? Oh, well, no, she's a communist. Don't you know she's that? She's a Russian, yeah. Yeah, she's That's a Russian a asset, yeah. according <laughs> to... <laughs> Oh, because Hillary he, said that. Yeah, yeah. He did. Uh, why Hillary said that? We have, <laughs> we have no idea why Hillary said that. You know, she's just. Well, I mean, what was she? I know why she was against Jill Stein because she blames Jill Stein for losing the election. You know, Never. when is when is Hillary going to blame herself for losing the election? Okay. Can you imagine those? You know, but what she has against Tulsi Gabbard, I have no idea. You know. Hey, huh? Yeah. Well, I mean, Tulsi Gabbard gives me a boner. I can't say that about any of the other candidates. Well, and Hillary is so far away from that 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 just old crotchety Hillary being jealous of a young, good-looking woman. So. Yeah. That's all that is. Well, you know, she then why isn't she going after uh, after? Um, uh, what's her name? Um, oh, Warren? Elizabeth Warren, because she's sexier than Hillary. In fact, you know, now that I think about it, Rudy Giuliani is sexier than Hillary Clinton. He looks terrible. What? Wait a minute. What, Patrick? I, I could get hard looking at Biden before Hillary, so you know. I mean, <laughs> I mean and then Sanders so reminds me. Every time I see Sanders, I just think of Larry David clowning him. I know. Yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> but I think I think. Uh, would uh, would you all agree with me that Biden is pretty well out of the game now? That he's kind of. You don't uh, think so, think so, Ray? He's still, he's still tied for the lead, leads or second in almost every single poll. I mean, yeah, but who are they polling? I don't see how that puts him out. Where are they polling this? Is the Russians? Uh, you know, I mean, I, I, mean, it's, it's... I don't know that I. You know, if I if they came to me and asked me who I was for, I don't think. Uh, you know, Elizabeth Warren would be the closest one of the three that I would suggest even had a, had a shot. But somewhere, there's got to be another person. There's got to be that stealth uh, candidate that we haven't even thought about. They're talking about, they were talking about Hillary. That's ridiculous. They were talking about Michelle, Michelle, o Michelle Obama. That's ridiculous because she doesn't want it. Nope. You know, she had her time Al in the Moore. White House. Um Al Gore? Yeah, no. Yeah, nah. Who said Al Gore? Oh, oh. Bree said Al Gore. Um, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, Al Gore, I think, has too much baggage. Uh, what, what, what we're looking for is a candidate that Trump can't really go after and call names of, you know? And he's already Even got if one. He can't call names. He's going to call names. Well, but I'm saying with Buttigieg, yes, what does he do? He can't. What, what, what is he going to call him? That little fairy or something? You know? I, I mean, come on. I could see Trump turning to him on the debate, saying, "Do you think I'm attractive? Would you date me?" 
Imagine the guy says, no, I don't find you attractive. You're a Republican. You like a man with little hands? <laughs> <laughs> little chimp hands. Little chimp You're right. Hands. What can he say to him, really? You, that would be interesting. Yeah, no, I mean, how would he How would he go after Buttigieg? Because Buttigieg just has too much stuff going for him. The only thing he'd go after would be things that would be so in bad taste, like the fact that the guy's gay. No, he's a nerd. A nerd? Maybe he could go after that. What he did, he sir? But yes, he's uh, he's Patrick. Square. He's young. He's inexperienced. Um, he thinks too highly of himself. Mm -hmm. uh, he knows everything. Everybody that else knows like nothing. And there's a yes. large swath of the American people who don't like that. Because you got to realize, they're smarter than you. You got to realize that, you, that Trump is in in the business you, of have uh, more than you. Uh, That's Trump. Trump is in the business of Doesn't campaigning. Of cam campaigning by insults, you know, he doesn't campaign on issues, but just on insults. So, you know, what have you? Um, uh, but I can't think of anybody else. You know, um, Judge Judy has come out for uh, what's his name for um, uh, Andrew Yang. A a no, for Bloomberg. Oh. Yeah, she says I've never in endorsed anybody, but I feel that the time is needed that that I endorse somebody, and so she's trying to, you know, she 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 decided to endorse um, uh, Bloomberg. Yes, uh, Patrick. Well, who the fuck is she that anybody gives a shit what her? Yeah, opinion? that's what I well, was going to say. Well, that's that's a very <laughs> that's a very good point. <laughs> I mean, if I came out and endorsed somebody, who would fucking care? <laughs> you know, just, just, I mean, yeah, she got a. Uh, I watch the show on occasion. Okay. It's interesting, but all right, uh, you you can say that about her, but you know the person who got a Barack Obama elected, right, was Oprah. Oprah. Right, but Oprah was, and, and probably still could have that gravitas across all. Gender, all race. I mean, Oprah was, uh, uh, she's an entity unto herself that nobody else can touch. And I mean, that's like bringing Elvis back. Oh, and does she still have a show? Who? Oprah? Oprah. No, she doesn't. Oprah. She doesn't, but she has her own channel. Yeah. You know, she took her show off, she decided to stop her show. But there, there's no one like her now that would make that, you know, I mean, that's why I said with Judge Judy, yeah, she, her shows are right, but who the hell is she to, that would influence somebody to vote hey, for her? Hey, hey, Patrick, she's fucking Judge Judy for crying out loud. I, I, I think they should give her a job on the Supreme Court. <laughs> She we watch it every day. I see her yelling at the what, set. What? What? But your mother watches <laughs> it every day. My mother's got to have that shit. Well, on. I can't like, wait for the hot benches uh, endorsement too. Next, <laughs> the hot bench <laughs> endorsement. I love that show. Those three ought to really knock it out. How of How many park. judge shows are there on the air now? I don't know about thirty. Y yeah, I mean, every, they must be. I think what the thing is, they're the cheapest shows in the world to produce. They take they mean nothing. One set, no budget. You know? Well, and, you, somebody... and you just get people to come by and say, I want to sue my friend on television. Yeah, I want to sue my sister, yeah. 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 Hmm. Wow. Yeah. She took a shit on my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> but that I wouldn't be on Judge permission. Judy. That's hot bench material. Bench. What? I didn't give her permission. I put up a fence so she couldn't do that, and she still did it. The fact that you know what goes on on these shows means you watch them, Kevin. Oh, every day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my life is as undramatic as yours is, okay, on a yeah. daily basis. I do not watch those shows, okay? <laughs> I will admit to watching TMZ. That but that's only because I want to know how every second-rate rapper in America is doing, <laughs> you know. So, no, I, for some reason, I like TMZ. It's just it's just great chewing gum. 
on television. Sometimes I watch 90 Day Fiance the other way, and my son laughs at me because he can hear me upstairs yelling at the TV, you dumb bleeping broad. <laughs> what the fuck? You're so stupid. No, but, Are you that but, 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 desperate? But, but, oh. oh, wait a minute. I just noticed you have another tattoo on your wrist. Yes. You didn't have a single tattoo on your body when I knew you. I've been bad. You've been bad. Any other tattoos beside the, uh, besides the um, rose that looks like a blemish? Nope. Uh, or, or that one? Why'd you get that one on your wrist? What is that for? Actually, you know what? It was for um, Simone's mom. I really liked her. No, no, no. I'm not up here. I'm talking, about the, I'm talking about the one on your wrist. That's got Sean's name. Oh, I see. Talk okay. Talk about this. All right. All right. So it, it it has has meaning. Just like my wife has one on her ankle. <laughs> That's that, funny. It says, uh, I'm trying to remember the name it has on there. Buddy, you said remember? Buddy. It says buddy. Ankle. No, it says Buddy. <laughs> I thought Chucky they were laughing. You know, <laughs> I, I wonder what the Buddy, fucking Buddy is on his, on his, on his ankle, on her ankle. <laughs> She won't, I, I can't, don't think she told me what husband that was or what boyfriend. Maybe it was, was. a dog. No, no, it was a boyfriend. It was right. a boyfriend. Or it was a husband. I think it was a husband. I don't know, but she didn't go out and get a tattoo with my name on it. You're yeah. the keeper, Alex, that's why. Huh? Yeah. You're the keeper. <laughs> yeah. I'm just guessing, I don't know. Yeah, yeah well, you know. I, 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 Let me get a tattoo with meatballs with raisins in them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> meatballs with raisins in them? I'm sorry. That's good. That's good. I Next like that. Next to my one. Batman tattoo. Next. Do you, you don't have a Batman tattoo. Not yet. No. Are you you're through with the tattoos, are you? I mean, I haven't gotten any more, so. Because I never got a tattoo because I didn't want anything on my body I'm that scared. I couldn't change. You know, and you it's very hard to get rid of tattoos. You know. Um, yeah. Well, it, I think you can laser them off if they're black. But if they're any of the colors like red or blue, they're very hard to get off. They actually have to be, be cut out. So, you know, if I were to get a tattoo, it would have to be something very meaningful. Um, and, and I've never been able to think of anything meaningful enough. That I I would get a tattoo for it, you know. Not even girlfriend. You know, probably now I could go get it, and I probably wouldn't have to take it off. Okay, because I'm at that point in my life where we look at each other and go, even if we hated each other, <laughs> this this is about as this is where it's going to wind up anyway. So you know, <laughs> we're it, stuck. you know, yeah, we're we're it, it, it's it, it, we're not it, divorce has never come into the conversation. Okay, where when you're younger, divorce does, you know, because you can still go out and find several other mates. All right, uh, at our age, hell, where are we going? Nowhere. So we have to learn how to put up with each other, and okay. we're doing a pretty good job of it. But. Uh, uh, but, you know, so I could get a tattoo that says, you know, a girlfriend on it or whatever. And I could tell the next girlfriend that that's her name, too. You know? <laughs> like, for instance, how long have I been signing off with if you see her, tell her I love her? I was doing it when you knew me, Forever. right? Forever. When yeah. you knew me. Yeah. And, and, and uh, that has always been my sign off. And uh, she, is, she's, she, she went to me one day. I was using it. and I, I stopped using it for a while. And then I went back and started using it. And she said, oh, that was so nice you did that for me. I said, it wasn't, it wasn't done for you. In fact, uh -oh. it was done for this girlfriend that kept breaking up with me who knows how many times. Yeah. And then I said, if you see her, tell her I love her. And I like that. That was a good closing. You know, that was something totally original. Mm -hmm. So that whatever girlfriend I had, oh, yeah, sure, Kathleen, I'm saying it for you. Oh, I knew you weren't <laughs> yeah. saying that for me. You know, uh, and, and but uh, but you know when I say it now, I actually my mind I'm thinking of of, of Marjorie. It's 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 strange. It, it it has a meaning to me that way. But that's a good thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's a good thing. I guess. You know. Come on. Um, yeah. Well. You know. I went years being a bachelor. 
You know, you you knew me when I started. When I well, I had been a bachelor. Wow, I I started being a bachelor when I long before I first met you. You know, I uh, my ex wife and I had finally broken up. And uh, I didn't get married for another 15, 20 years, something like that. So mm -hmm. I went for a long time being a very selfish bachelor, which is just fine with me because the conversation was always about me. So anyway, but if she's out there listening, if you see her, tell her I love her. And her name is... Uh, he <laughs> hates new. Huh? I'm kidding. I hate what? Nothing. What do you mean I hate new? hate you. I hate you. No. I was kidding. Oh, you hate me? Did you say no. you hated me? Who are you saying you hate? You were saying, you know, if I, if you see her, tell her I love her. And I said, he hates you. <laughs> no. I was kidding. Hardly. Hardly. But, uh, you know. No, but you know what? That whole thing with you know who out in New York, I was ready to fly out there and one punch patty her. Oh, you mean uh, the the one that dumped me? All yeah, because yeah. I, I remember talking to you, and I was not happy about that. Yeah, well, I it that just was not nice. It, it, that was the one that it, well, we we broke up uh, something like twelve times. Yeah. Oh my god! Uh, yeah, and then but that was before I met Kathleen. We broke up twelve times in like uh, I don't know, uh, 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 oh, about seven years, oh. something like that. I don't know. I can't remember. I mean, and, I had nothing against her when I, you know, when I met you because, you know, I didn't know her. It was after you moved to New York and that whole debacle. Well, then I met up with her again. And I said, it can't fuck up again this time. You know, and, and sure enough, it did. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, was, it just seemed like a very romantic notion that after, like, I think it was something like 10 years that we hadn't seen each other that we started talking to each other and fell in love with each other again. And I, that was a very romantic notion. But she just did, did it so I could get thumped again. You know, so. You know, when you break up with something, very, with someone, very rarely does it ever work out the second time. Well, it's because you broke up for a reason. And the reason was yeah. you didn't get along. But, exactly. you know. Exactly. Uh, when it comes to affairs of the heart, I think I'm somewhat stupid. You know, I mean, I have a, I still have it within me a very romantic notion about things, you know, mm -hmm. and and uh, so that was a very romantic notion to me that, oh, after 10 years of we, we finally got back together again. Isn't that wonderful? Look how it was like a movie that it played. It's, uh, I was so wrong. I was so wrong. You know, I was probably like this. Uh, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She, You've always been kind of protective of me. Totally. Yeah. 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 So, but you know, I then shortly after that met up with Marjorie, and and she wasn't a rebound. You know, in fact, when I first went out with her, I figured, ah, this is just one of those. I I think I did it online or something. We met, and I didn't think it was going to turn into anything, even after the first date. And then all of a sudden, we got to kind of really like each other and hang out with each other and. Finally, you know, when you, you find out that you've been spending more time with a person than you haven't been spending with that person. Right. All of a sudden, they become, you become romantic about the situation. Yep. Jeff's been sitting there kind of quietly tonight. How you doing, Jeff? Yeah, he's, he's a mime now. You got to turn on your <laughs> mic when you talk to us. He always forgets to turn on his mic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's otherwise... We get other information. How about how about Bloomberg? Because you're, you know, I, one I one Jew one Jew to another. You know, well, would America vote for a Jew? Uh, probably not. Probably not. Yeah. Well, I think uh, Pete. You know, the fact that he's gay, I, and and you know he's young and all that kind of stuff. And he yeah. Have that kind of experience. Where he's a he's a very interesting uh, guy. But I don't think he would ever win. Yeah, uh, and 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 uh, Josh, who, who recently I think when we mentioned Bloomberg, you called him what a pussy or something like that. Um, you, he's that too. Yeah, sure, we'll go with pussy. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but then you got Pete Buttigieg. What do you think of Pete Buttigieg? Fuck that guy, man. I don't like that guy either. Why? 
Elf on the shelf. Because <laughs> I mean, my, my whole thing, I mean, Buttigieg is just another guy that Democrats fall in love with for 15 minutes and can't understand that when that's over, we have to get on with the business of government. And it, it's just, I don't see him as a, you know, a leader, as a strong individual. I mean, he reminds me of the guy that runs our plant you know he's 37 years old and he fucking knows everything about everything it'll be all up in everybody's fucking business about it i mean he just he's just another i mean I, I and he I doesn't just, come across that way to me the, uh, as being a know-it-all no, at all me. um hey, I, josh would you uh, say the same thing about uh obama obama no i didn't feel like that about obama i mean i wasn't you know, a huge supporter of Obama before. I mean, he didn't, it wasn't, you know, nearly as bad to where I said, you know, I would never vote for him or anything. I wasn't really a huge supporter of him at times, you know, when he was president. I mean, I think overall he did a, you know, a good job and, you know, a very professional, you know, job and everything. But, uh, I mean, and, and you know, Buttigieg is not gonna, he's not gonna receive the support you know, of the black community. I mean, there was an article, again, I think the same day I read the one about Hillary in the Washington Post about the fact that even as much as he's been trying these last few months, he can get, you know, he's getting zero traction among black voters, uh, mostly over the issue of him being gay, which I said before on this program many times, if you've ever spent enough time around, you know, enough just, you know, it, it, it's average... Blacks in a, you know, production area or, you know, I mean, in the city that I work in, they're not really big on gay people. I mean, I don't well, I, I could didn't say I, it was right. It, I just it, said that's what it let was. Me, let me bring up something to you. Uh, uh, it, 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 am I being a little wrong when I say that I think that um, uh, uh, that there's a problem with the, with the black communities that We'd like to think of them because of the intolerance that's been foisted upon them that they're more tolerant than other right. people. But really, they're really quite intolerant when it comes yes. to gays uh, yes. as an example. Yes, Patrick. I brought this up years ago, mm -hmm. and I probably brought it up on Sirius. Yeah. People forget that a great deal of the black community is religious. And they do adhere to conservative values when it comes to social issues like abortion, uh -huh. like yeah. our gays, uh, that sort of stuff. Now, when it comes to other issues like uh, crime or uh, you know uh, who's in who's in charge, they become a little bit more liberal. But they are a very diverse part of our society that I think. Um, the Democrat assume that just because we may agree with them politically on a number of things, that they're just going to go along on everything and not have a mind of their own. And the black mm -hmm. friends that I have that are, two of them are ministers, and there's no way in hell that they would ever vote for anybody who is gay mm -hmm. and somebody who supported abortion. So right. they have a real, real hard time when it comes to presidential election voting for, mm -hmm. you know, a Democrat who supports abortion. That's where Clinton was a perfect Democrat. Yeah. Because yeah. he supported abortion, but only in rare cases, and he stated it that way. And he also was, what was it, don't ask, don't tell so they, the friends of mine that, that voted for him, they were very comfortable with that idea. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's just from my personal experience and what I've seen. Yeah. But, you know, I, I mean, that kind of supports what Josh was saying. So. Uh, by the way, uh, yes, I was going to say that it looked to me like Kathleen had Pete Buttigieg at her apartment now. Would you care to show apartment. him to Apartment. Apartment. A house, excuse me. Have you paid off the mortgage on that finally? Damn near. Damn near. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's see uh, the elf on the shelf there. That's uh, that's Pete Buttigieg. 
He's oh, running. He, he, wa- he wants your vote, right? And um, he's... <laughs> you like that, don't you, Bree? <laughs> yes, Jeff. Well, uh, my, my good black friends... <laughs> So, and they, they seem to like the black kid. They, they, uh, and they like the gay kid, too. The, do they like the gay kid? They like both kids. So, wait know. a minute, do the Democrats have... Wait a minute. Uh, out, uh, they have a, a, a black, black woman running, but there's no black male, is there? What about that Booker guy? Booker! 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 Huh? It's Cory Booker! <laughs> oh, I forgot. I forgot Cory Booker. Excuse me. Yes, I. I. I'm sorry. He is black, isn't he? My eyeballs popping out. Yeah. Let me see here. We we have uh, Lee Press on has joined us at this. Uh, Hi, gang. Hold on a second. I'm trying to find you. There we are. Uh, when I get to this many people, I have to start go looking for the uh, the people there. Here, there's Lee Press on, and and look at that. Is that not mood lighting he's got there, or Love what? It. I can turn it off if it's bugging anyone. Things are crazy here. <laughs> I don't want to check in. I just I just stopped in. Why did you do that, oh, Lee? Why, why did you do that kind of lighting in your in your um um uh, uh, a nightclub in there? Yeah, it looks like he's <laughs> running a nightclub there. So we're gonna combine the future. What? Yeah. Let's go nuts. Okay, there. How's that? Is that better? Oh, that's that. We can see you now. It's the end of the night, and I've turned the house lights on. Yeah, yeah. I feel like Phil's yeah. going to bust yeah. in. There's a little music to go. Huh? Okay, how about, uh, how about this? I can develop photographs. <laughs> <laughs> My pool does that. It switches colors. It looks cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, boy. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Hi, folks. Yeah. I just wanted to step in and, and pimp my album. It came out today. Oh, yeah. There we go. There's the album, and it is, it is called what? It's called Last Request by my band, Lee Press on and the Nails. And, hi. and uh, it's available on iTunes and Amazon. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's, and here it is right here. Yeah, right there, folks. See? Uh, it, what's it called yeah. again? You plug it. Plug it's it. Called Last Request. Last I'll send you. I'll send you a free digital copy, Alex. If you if you give me an email address of some kind. Yeah, it's Alex at gabnet dot net. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Now everybody else can write me and pester me. Yeah. Good. Good. <laughs> good. Good thinking there, Alex. You know. Yeah. No, actually, that no, that address is pretty well known. You know. Okay. Uh, I have some private addresses that I have as well. But, uh, Don't tell anybody. No, I, I don't tell anybody my other addresses. Um, uh, but uh, the one I can't get working is Alex Bennett at alexbennett.com for some reason. But I do oh, have yeah. I, I do have alexbennett.com, however. So whatever. Uh, let me see here. We got how many minutes? So oh, we got about uh, about uh, about uh, about. The ten minutes left. Ten minutes. Program. I arrived just in time. J- arrived just in time to pimp your fucking album. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, who do you want to see be president of the United States, Lee? Or are you taking the? Uh, oh golly! I'm, of course, I'm. I'm always a fan of my man, Bernie Sanders. Warning! <laughs> warning, everyone! Warning! We're all gonna die! Ah, no. I'll take uh, I'll take whoever has a D after their name. A D after their like, name. Like everybody in the top five in the dem, I'd happily vote for any five of them. You know, I'm I'm sorry in my lifetime that I that I was too adherent to voting for the D, because there are people at times that I felt that maybe I they were Republicans and maybe they deserve my vote, you know. <laughs> but that's yeah. in retrospect. That's in retrospect. I mean. Um, one of the most honest politicians that ever lived, I didn't vote for, and that was, uh, uh, what's his name from uh, Arizona? Uh, Goldwater. Mm. Uh, I was very big on, on not voting for Goldwater because I, you know, I believed he was a terrible, horrible conservative. I mean, he was a conservative, but the, the kind of conservative that Goldwater was today, we'd be happy to have him as a Republican. Yeah. You know? Uh, because along with that came a 
group of core principles, which uh, I've not seen very often in American politics. Uh, so, uh, but everybody believed the story that he was going to bomb us out of existence. There was that famous advertisement that Lyndon Johnson created, that his campaign created, of the little girl playing with a flower, you know, Daisy, and all of a sudden the explosion of an atomic bomb. Uh, this is what will happen if you vote. Don't vote for Johnson, you know. So mm -hmm. that that killed that killed Goldwater. You know, so. Yeah. Uh, but I, I don't know. I, I think that we should not wed ourselves to parties but ideals and thoughts. And I just, love, I just like honest politicians. I've been warming yeah. up lately to Romney, believe it or not, only because I believe him to be an honest man. I don't know that I would want his conservative ideals in the White House. But uh, if I want somebody who is honest, you don't get, you don't get is, a much more honest than Mormons. He is governed by logic. Yeah. You can at least say that about him. Yeah. But, you know, Mormons, um, uh, I'm sorry, Mormons are, are, are pretty honest people all the way around. So I, I don't, uh, you know, I don't, uh, uh, I, 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 again, I don't, uh, what's, what, what was I going to say? I just, you know, I, I, I would, if he were to, uh, let me think about this for a second. Depends on who he ran against. But I could see myself voting for Romney if it was a last-ditch effort because the Democrat was so bereft of any kind of logic or decency. How about you, Josh? Could, did you, could you, you're, I basically get the idea you're a Democrat, but have you crossed party lines? No, I never have. Yeah, yeah. Could you conceive of I mean, Romney... Well, I mean, and like Romney for me, I mean, but he he came around way too late for me. I yeah, mean, yeah, I would agree uh, with as you. As far as Trump, I mean, very early on with Trump, it was he was the same as the rest of them. Well, you know, uh, yeah, it's not really that bad. Yeah, you yeah. know what? Now all of a sudden he's fucking found Jesus when it comes to Trump. Like 15 minutes ago, it's like so. You know, I'm supposed to respect him now. I mean, I, I I don't really. How about you, Kevin? How do you feel about Romney? Kevin? About what's that? About Romney? Sorry. How do you feel about Romney? Uh, I don't like him. Yeah. Yeah. Don't feel that he's honest? Uh, I won't say that. I just, I, I've never, I've never, uh, I've never had any uh, interest in the guy at all, because you got to remember that the uh, the the template for Obamacare was Romney mm -hmm. Care in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. You know, so there is something about this guy that doesn't, you know, does think mm -hmm. out of the box, so to speak. You know. but, yeah, but, but that wasn't his responsibility. Really, when he was uh, in Massachusetts. What do you mean it wasn't his responsibility? It came under his... his. Uh... I know he did, but I don't know if he really forced it. I, he kind of... It happened by accident. <laughs> That's the way I look at it. It happened by accident, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I just... Um, um, you know, I mean, I, I just f f lately have warmed up to him because I guess of his opposition to Trump. And his no nonsense opposition to Trump. It's pretty well, yeah. you know. I, uh, hmm? I used to be a Republican. I, I cast I cast my very first vote for Reagan because I was a 19 year old nihilist who didn't care if the world ended. But um, I left the party the day Boss Baby announced his candidacy. That was the day I said I'm out. But who? Trump. The oh, day he said he was running for president. That was the day I left. That's the day you left. So are you now a registered Democrat? I am. Wow. So that was enough to force you out of the party. Definitely. I think there are a lot of people who feel forced out of the Democratic Party. Patrick? Well, I said the other night, I stopped calling myself a Republican, but I didn't change my, my viewpoint. I'm a conservative. I still have the same yeah. thoughts and ideals. I just don't call myself a Republican because I can't align myself with Trump. Yeah. But I haven't, I, there's no Democrat that I'd vote for 
that's out there. I mean, I cut my nuts off first, and I couldn't feel them anyway, so I guess it went down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Fairly said. Um, Kathleen, do you have anybody in this, in the... In the you know, for the most part, I pretty much despise politics. Once the lobbying starts, you know, it's all about big corporations, big pharma, anybody that's got the money. Yeah. How about and, you? You know, in this election, I don't see anybody coming up with any viable solutions to, you know, mental health, homelessness, uh, the reha rehabilitation, you know, because we've got all these drugs coming over the uh Border. I mean, we're the consumers. I and, you know, and all the stuff that's happening in South America, you know, it was our prior governments that caused all that Actually, shit. the drugs coming across the border aren't what's killing people. It's the drugs that are being made by Big Pharma that are killing people. You know? Well, the problem is, you know, those drugs end up getting so expensive, you know, 30 to 40 bucks a pill, you can get black tar heroin for a lot less. Yeah, yeah but what I'm saying is that this whole thing about the uh, the, the painkillers, which have been, by the way, a boon to somebody like Kevin, who's needed them desperately, right, Kevin? I mean, yeah. Yeah. And, and what I hate is that the fact that they've been so promiscuous about putting them out there and now it's become a big news item you know that oxycontin's killing people and the these uh, these drugs are killing people that somebody like kevin probably has to go begging his doctors right for the pain medicine well i did for a while what? yeah yeah i lost my stepsister she oh, accidental overdose two weeks out of rehab fentanyl and the ironic part is she was married to a pharmaceutical bigwig but she was getting the drugs online because this was back in 2003, four and five before, I mean, you could go online and get them from anywhere. Yeah, wow. Yeah. She had got a back injury and that's what started yeah. it all. But I, I don't think the da really dangerous drugs are coming across the border quite as much as it's Fentanyl? big pharma. Huh? Fentanyl, the precursors are from China and they go into Mexico. Yeah. And then they come across into our country. Wow. Yeah. I mean, if you go in Mexico, I mean, all hell broke loose in Culiacan just a week ago. They grabbed one of uh, Chapo's sons, Ovidio, and they were in the house and about 300 of the cartel surrounded the house. And and we're basically saying we'll start going. I mean, we'll start we'll start a war unless you let him go. I mean, the cartels rule in Mexico. Right. The government, they're. They're basically fucked. Well, this has certainly been an interesting evening Evening tonight. We've gone all over the place. And um, everybody's, I think, gotten their two cents worth in as well, which is kind of nice. And there is the theme. Oh, just in time for me to thank Kathleen. Thank you so much. You, you're out of the park with the elf on the shelf <laughs> bit. Uh, 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 <laughs> Jo Josh Wheeler, thank you so much. Uh, uh, Patrick Blazik, thank you. Lee Presson, of course, Kevin. Always nice to see you here. Jeff, great to have you around. Bree, uh, I, I want to say bye-bye uh, to you, but I used to say do bye to you. Oh, that's uh, Chinese Wan, isn't it? I held up the album. Uh, you see, to you see, and okay. uh, yes, yeah, so hold up your album there, Lee. And of course, yes, uh, thanks. Yes, I'm a filthy horror. Yes. <laughs> uh, also, thanks to uh, 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 Tony for being with us, and and thanks to me too. Anyway, let's uh, all give a big wave goodbye. Okay, and I'll wave back at you. There we go. There they go. There we go. I. I I didn't have it off of Dissolve. Oh, let me see here. There we go. Anyway, that's it for our show tonight. That's it for our, uh, our week. Uh, let me just uh, hang up on all these people abruptly. So that the next program, which is, of course, the uh, intersection with Jack Bishop. Uh, see, I can't look at you at the same time and, and get out of all of that. The, uh, it, with Jack Bishop is next over most of the same, uh, same gabnet. Uh, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see you again on let's see uh, Tuesday uh, at uh, well right after let me let me try this again 
right after Damien Chaplin does his program, The Exchange, we'll be here at 10 o'clock, Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life, and in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>